Poetry. I'm really glad that you're watching. Today we're going to start out with just some basic terms and postulates. And we're going to start out with what are called undefined terms. And those undefined terms are a point, a line, and a plane. And the reason that they're called undefined is that literally they do not have a definition yet. We haven't built anything in geometry yet, so what we do is we just give these a general description and then we take these terms to actually build definitions and then from those ones they, we build some more and then just keep building and building and building. So this is basically our starting point. Let's first look at a point. A point indicates a location and has no size. We represent a point by a dot and a capital letter. Now let's look at a line. A line is represented by a straight path that extends in two opposite directions without end. It just goes on and on and on, and it has no thickness. A line contains infinitely many points, and we can name it by any points that are on the line. We just need to take two of those points. So in this case, I have named it line AB, and Order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I start with the A or the B. I'm still talking about the same line. But take note that I need to have this line symbol right above these letters to indicate that I am indeed talking about a line. Again, I can name it by any of the letters. So I could also name it line CD. Or I could even take this point here and this point here and name it line AD or I could have reversed this and just called it line DA. I can also name it by this cursive lowercase letter right here and just call it line L. The last undefined term is a plane. A plane is represented by a flat surface. So think of a piece of paper and hopefully that letter that you see in the corner there is the grade that you're going to earn in this class. Anyway, think of it as a piece of paper except that a plane would continue in all directions infinitely. It would just go on and on and on in all directions and it has no thickness. And we represent a plane by using a parallelogram. We can name it by this letter that's in the right hand corner and we could just call it plane P or we can name it by any of the points that are in the plane. And we just need three of them and we can use any of those three in any order. In this case, I've just named it plane ABC, but I could have also named it plane CBA or I could have named it BCD or DCB. I need at least three, but I could have put four letters as well and that would be okay too. Now that we've given our undefined terms a general description, let's start creating our defined terms. And we're going to start with a segment, a ray, and opposite rays. Now a segment is part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all the points that are between them. And take note that I have colored our undefined terms in blue so you can see how we've used them now to create definitions. We can name a segment by the two endpoints and we can go in either direction. It doesn't matter which point that we start with. We just need to make sure that we have this segment bar right above those two letters and that tells us that we're talking about a segment. Now let's talk about a ray. A ray is part of a line that consists of one endpoint. So in this ray, point A is our endpoint and all the points of the line on one side of the endpoint. You can name a ray by its endpoint and another point on the ray, such as AB. The order of points indicates the ray's direction. So we could have also named it this way as well, but this endpoint of this ray here has to be over the letter A because that's telling us that our ray started with this endpoint right here. Now opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint. So in this case they share this endpoint. The opposite rays created here are BA and BC. 
they both share this endpoint right here. So one ray is BA and the other ray going in the other direction is ray BC. Again, my arrow is going in the right direction over the BC. It matches the direction of this ray right here. Now we have two new words that actually both mean the same thing. A postulate is an accepted statement of fact. I'm sorry to interrupt this video, but I've just received some breaking math news from the Extreme Math Center, and it says that what you're about to learn is one of the most important things of the year. We're now going to take those terms and definitions to create postulates. And postulates are an accepted statement of fact. We're going to use those postulates throughout the year to prove some really cool things. Anyway, I like to say that postulates just make common sense. We don't need to take time to prove them. They're kind of like, no, duh. But anyway, don't say that on a quiz or a test. Let's go ahead and get back to our regular video. And it's the basic building blocks that we use in geometry. So the first one is, through any two points, there is exactly, can you guess, one line. No duh, it just makes sense. The next postulate is if two distinct lines intersect, then, can you guess, where do they intersect at? They intersect in exactly one point. Again, duh, just makes sense. Now the next one is that through any three non-collinear points, and non-collinear means that they don't form a line. So in this case right here, these points are all collinear because they share the same line. So non-collinear means that we can't make a line out of those three points. There is exactly one plane. If you can draw a triangle in between those three points, then you have a plane. Our last postulate has to do with two planes. And what it says is if we take these planes and they intersect, then their intersection is exactly, let me actually change the viewpoint of these planes. So what I've done here is I've just taken plane N and I've just put it right through plane M and their intersection is exactly, can you guess? It is just a line. Makes sense. I'll see you guys in class. I'm looking forward to a really great year this year. I'm sorry to interrupt this video, but I just received this breaking math news from the Extreme Math Center, and it says that what you're about to learn is one of the most important things of the year. <laughs> I better do it again. I can't help laughing. I can't help laughing. The extreme math center.